Alright guys, so check this out, we're 5 days away from the Black Panther DLC and early impressions are already pouring in. We have some details from a Forbes article surrounding the Wakanda DLC and they seem to be generally very positive. It definitely seems that this is the best DLC that Crystal Dynamics has put out so far. So we will check some really cool new gameplay details including some of Black Panther's abilities that we haven't seen before and also a first look at one of the corrupted Vibranium events that will start soon after the new DLC including a few more on top so let's jump right into it and we're gonna kick it off with this Forbes article right here with a super early impression of the Black Panther DLC the new expansion and of course a first look at the character we're gonna check that in just a little bit but Paul Tassi is mentioning I am deeply impressed with both Black Panther as a fighter and Wakanda as a zone whether this will change the long-term fortune for Avengers I'm not sure but when Crystal Dynamics talked about their long-term vision for the game, adding new heroes and areas and telling an ongoing story, this feels like the first true example of seeing that potentially fully realized. Furthermore, he says this preview offered the first real look at Black Panther's full character kit. I have always been impressed with how Marvel's Avengers has designed these heroes. All eight in the game right now are a lot of fun and this is some of the best brawler combat I've played in years. Each of these heroes feel like they could be leading their own solo game and Black Panther appears to be no exception. So really positive early impressions right here on his part. It definitely seems that a Black Panther as a character, as a playable character, is definitely right there top tier as we got used to with, with Hawkeyes as well because the Hawkeyes were also really amazing and really powerful characters so I'm very glad that Black Panther doesn't feel weaker compared to those characters and that bar is still really high but let's continue reading here Black Panther obviously uses his claws a lot but in some unique ways like for example pinning enemies and slashing their faces or having the unique ability to hang from walls and launch into attacks from there so at least partially we have a confirmation on how he is going to do traversal he can hang from walls I would expect maybe spider-man to also kind of do this as well but he can leap from walls and launch into attacks that sounds really awesome perhaps most impressive are his heroics so here it goes his support heroic shoots out healing slash damaging Wakandan tech beads, which sounds awesome. His assault heroic is a skill shot spear that can either pin enemies to walls or explode on contact with kinetic energy. But his ultimate summons a giant panther god briefly before buffing him and modifications to the ability can also do things like summoning spectral Wakandan warriors to fight at your side. In short, he seems like another home run character for Crystal Dynamics and honestly just from this description right here it gets me super hyped. I cannot wait to play Black Panther and see what types of builds work for him. And also it's nice to see a confirmation on how his assault heroics uh, works like. We saw him throwing the spear into one of these clips but we didn't really know what it does. Well, it can either pin or explode on contact and deal high kinetic energy. We will talk about kinetic energy in just a little bit, by the way, because there's going to be a new vibranium status effect in the game that does, does some really cool stuff from the description. And there's also an ongoing event that will start soon after the game's launch. But in the meantime, let's continue with the article. So there's then Wakanda itself, the new region of the expansion. At a certain point, Avengers environments can feel relatively generic and kind of copy and paste but Wakanda it feels several levels beyond anything we've seen from the game so far a truly gorgeous zone that stands out not just in this game but most games in terms of actual gameplay there are new area based objective mini games past what the game has offered so far and even some minor puzzles as T'Challa has shown solving a puzzle based on Wakandan lore in new campaign sequences. Um, by the way, we also have a look at that in one of the recent tweets from yesterday by the way. So intricate puzzles can be found nestled away in the deepest reaches of Wakanda and are different than currently existing ones. Put on your explorer hat 
had to solve them on August 17. And yeah, it definitely seems that this is placed in some kind of um, like underground temple. I like the aesthetics of it, even though I'm not like the biggest fans when it comes to puzzles in online games. I'm kind of like in between. I'm okay with them as long as they don't get too overwhelming or too annoying in the way of my progression. Nonetheless, let's talk more about the rest of the expansion. Like what about new characters and new villains and even more so new enemies well the article further touches on that so let's keep going i have to laugh at this expansion that it is adding yet another new hub base given that we barely use the three exclamation mark we already have in the game and that this one is gorgeous and full of minor details like soldiers that salute T'Challa as he walks by. I only got a brief glimpse at the story, but there are a number of new characters here, from Shuri to Okoye, and yes, the other Avengers have new voice lines and new roles in the story. And man, I mean, yeah, Crystal Dynamics is going overboard with the new base hubs. I mean, we already have three. I barely use one, by the way, and that's because I have to queue into something. So having another one in Wakanda is probably gonna be the next big hub that we will continue using. While the others will remain abandoned, at least at higher levels, you're probably only gonna use them while you're leveling up or doing the story, and that's pretty much it. But nonetheless, moving on into the more medium expectation things, we did get a glimpse at new villains, both major and minor. So there are apparently three new types of enemies, the Claw Hammer guys, the Claw Sonic guys, and Wakandan Robot Spiders surprise surprise hijacked by the claw now these seem fine though the new sonic damage produces a screen warping effect that i imagine will get annoying pretty quickly but let's keep going we saw claw in the preview footage but did not fight him directly we did however see the second main villain appearing in this expansion crossbones now the bad news with him as the article notes is that he seems like Taskmaster slash Abomination Bullet Sponge type boss, and his whole model seems like something of a reskin of past Reaper heavy enemies, but I suppose I only saw a short fight with him. Um, kinda sounds a bit worrying, I was kinda hoping we would uh, detach from the Taskmaster slash Abomination fighting, you know, but I guess it's still gonna be the case in Wakanda as well, but at least we have new enemy types and new attack types, so that's uh, really interesting. Now, actual combat objectives are more complicated in some sequences. Now, there was one crazy climactic sequence where you have to juggle enemies trying to bash down three defense points, where you can both turn on Wakandan turrets to help you and also hit a big EMP button to stun enemies but knock the turrets offline. Whoever was playing the sequence barely scrapped through it even in the demo footage, so yeah. Yeah, it sounds a little bit more complicated than I actually thought. Now on to the few red flags as the article notes about this DLC. Obviously, um, if we talk about the good sides, let's also talk about some of the not so great sides. So talking to Crystal Dynamics after I watched this footage while they confirmed this was the biggest expansion the game has seen so far, because of the new zone, they did say that the actual story campaign was about the same length as the rather short Clint and Kate campaigns we've already seen. They confirmed that the game would not add any new hives or vaults, only drop zones, threat sectors and villain sectors and the omega level threat in Wakanda is not launching with this expansion and will come later likely with a gear cap um, increase. So yeah, it definitely sounds a bit worrying that we're only getting about like 5 hours, just a few hours of new story campaign with a new expansion. Honestly, I was expecting a little bit more given the fact that this um, is like the most hyped and biggest DLC so far. Like the other stuff is really cool but totally let me know down below what do you think of the story length. Do you prefer lengthier stories in new DLCs and expansions or do you just breeze through them and never look back at them because I think that there's people on both sides of the argument. Now on a final note, it also seems that there haven't been too many gear changes coming with the core looting loop of the game with this new DLC, which I view as the biggest uh, problem. And yes, it's true, it's one of the game's biggest problems. I think that should be a top priority if it wasn't up until this point, like a loot 2.0 for this game definitely needs to happen. Now, yeah, the article further mentions that there's gonna be new perks on gear and there's gonna be like new sets based around the two new damage types, but loot itself doesn't seem to be changed 
changing much. Now, we do have a bit of information on the new loot type, which is going to be this Corrupted Vibranium type of effect that we have on the loot. And this will coincide with the Corrupted Vibranium event that begins on August 19. So this event basically begins with a cluster of, let's just say, missions. And this will begin appearing on August 19. And they will continue to last for up to two weeks until September 2nd, with a number of missions being affected by the Corrupted Vibranium effect. So yeah, this is the list of missions right here that we will see changing. But um, these unique missions are available for each hero, by the way, including Black Panther. And they will task you with performing specific feats in Corrupted Vibranium threat sectors. Now, completing these mission chains will reward you with gear that has the vibranium status effects on them. And this is actually um, the cool part here. Now, this will turn all damage dealt to affected enemies into a large kinetic explosion that can hit other enemies and set off chain reactions. So yeah, it definitely sounds like the type of status effect that is right down my alley. I really enjoy, you know, effects that can jump between multiple targets and deal like really crazy AoE. I really, really enjoyed that. By the way, here is also a first look at one of these Vibranium operative events. Essentially, it's just like a mission chain and you have to complete some objectives, most of which revolve around defeating enemies or defeating enemies under certain conditions or with certain types of abilities. Now, additionally, Vibranium status items are available from completing Vibranium threat sectors during this event. So each one of these will reward you with a melee or a ranged item with that status effect, but you can also buy other items with the same vibranium status effect from one of the vendors that's gonna have that stock in the Wakanda DLC. So yeah, it looks really awesome. Actually, yeah, I think that overall the DLC looks pretty promising, way more promising than what we had so far. There's some really cool stuff in there, but um, yeah, maybe that story length will be a deal breaker to some people. So again, totally cast your opinions down below and I'll see you guys next time.